Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are 23 January of 2024. Around the table we have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemaire not there yet, Mark Waite, Stéphane Merl, Kevin Martins and Bruno Vart and are all there. Um, let's get started with announcements. First of all, we didn't have a, a weekly release as a reminder today. It has been postponed to tomorrow. That will be delivered, that's the second announcement, uh, during the security release that will happen tomorrow, a core security release announced uh, one or two days ago that will be scoped to a new LTS line, a former LTS lines, and the weekly line. So, so there I, will be yeah. there. I'm surprised that there will be something on a former LTS line. Oh, may, maybe I'm saying something wrong. I took there was at least the previous LTS. Uh, if if they do it, that's great. I just wasn't aware of it. No problem. Okay, I might be wrong, so don't take that information. Yeah, two dot four twenty six dot three is the one I was expecting. Yes, I wasn't assuming they would release any earlier version, but they've. On dot one security releases, sometimes they've done that. I don't remember them ever doing that on a dot three. I'm not sure. Uh, so let's consider we only have at least one LTS and one weekly. That's already a busy day. Right. Um, I will need someone to drive the meeting next week. I will take care of publishing last week and this week uh, recording tomorrow, of course. But I will be off next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I won't be reachable at all. So that's why I need someone to drive the weekly meeting. Hopefully, that will be a quick one since, as you can see, everyone will be going to force them the week after. So we still have a packed milestone for the upcoming one, but in two milestones, that will be really slow. So I had an open question mm -hmm. in a discussion separately that shouldn't we just cancel the the Tuesday infra meeting the week after FOSDEM, given that, for instance, me, I'll be exhausted as having just been on an airplane getting from Belgium back to back to home all day Monday and others have similar travel long days Monday. Mm -hmm. Would we be okay? Would would it be safe to trans cancel the meeting after FOSDEM? I vote for just Thumbs up or thumbs down for everyone? Yeah, so I see enough thumbs up to say yes. Good. So I'll remove it from the Four, calendar. Five, six. Thanks, Mark. Okay, I will adapt the milestone uh, for preparing for next week then. I will prepare them in advance. And so we'll all see each other six... Uh, uh, the third, thirteenth uh, of February, then. Okay. Is there any question or points or elements related to announcement or additional announcements? Nope. Okay. So next weekly, tomorrow. I don't remember the numbers. Let's have a look at Infra CI. I think it's 442. Next LTS tomorrow. Point uh, four, is it 426? I don't remember the numbers by hand. Yes. So of course we have the Jenkins advisory tomorrow. Let me add it. So we must not break the infrastructure except for the NAT gateway and uh, let's say the most emergent tasks. Uh, next major event, of course, was them next week. And um, I think it's uh, 13 and 14 of March for the, the scale. Correct.
Is that okay for everyone? I might have an announcement related to operational elements. Uh, there might be an availability of CI Jenkins IO either a Thursday or Friday, depending on how things are going tomorrow. Uh, that need to be announced. That might be a 24 hours uh, advanced announcement. I would have wanted more, but it depends on the security release. Um, an available. Now available for migration either Thursday and or Friday. The goal will be to migrate the controller to the new subscription so we can avoid paying for it even if we still have one one week left for January. So and and there the there will be a preceding on Wednesday an upgrade from 426.2 to 426.3 on, on that, but that's not this. This is really a change of which host we're using to run, right? Exactly. Thanks. Go cool. upgrade. As it depends on the security release. Great, thanks. I will give more detail on the upcoming, but that's a major announcement. Let's get started. So a user lost their permission on the GitLab branch source plugin. That was a consequence of the security release that locks some elements uh, when we approach soon to avoid people accidentally merging to the main branch branches and having the security team having to transplant changes and re-release again the bits they staged a few days before the release. So that has been fixed and canceled and it was a matter of communication. And in the end, nothing to be improved as I understand because the main the plugin maintainer did not see the email and they tried to, to access, open the issue and then realized that they had an email say, saying, hey, you, uh, you won't have uh, access for a few days uh, to your repository. So no actionable on the infra side. I don't know if you have a question. Encourage uh, installing a Vatek in the application to see a banner on the repository when you are a maintainer. I'm not aware of that application, so I'm also learning something in the process. What kind of application is it? It's a browser side application, mm -hmm. uh, which adds uh, a banner on the repo when there is a security release concerning their repository, I think. Let me, sorry, I have to check on my side. Okay, got a check or had, I mean, we will see Vadek as far as I understand during the first time, is that correct, Mark? Yes, that's okay, correct. So that will be the perfect location to ask him then. Right. Uh, thanks, Mark, for handling the Jira license. That's been renewed. Thanks I... to Linux Foundation for doing the work. Thanks, Elif and Mark. Um, thanks, Alex, for taking care of the crowding request. So crowding is a mechan is a system to help translating plugins, if I'm correct. So maintainer requested access to that system in order to help a translation of the labels of their plugin. So no actionable for us. Uh, we have seen issues with Windows Agent on CI Jenkins IO. So that one, it looks like it has been a combination of different uh, problems. Main problem, not completely gone. Um, network issues, it's not exhaustion. So I will give more detail later. But we had issues on the setup of our public network, the network which is used by these agents. So that's the first root cause. That thing was causing the outbound request to either repo Jenkins CI from the ACP or from the machines running on the network when they try to reach the outside. That was causing the collection to pile up. And this connection by being piled up were reaching a maximum uh, outbound connection slowing down effectively the agent. 
that's a specific case of Windows agent inside container. It's because our virtual machine have their own virtual network, which has its own setup. But in that case, the network was partially shared with the, the, the faulty network because Windows Container Agent are using um, a service on Azure name. I always forget the acronym. That's Azure Container Services or something, which is uh, under the hood of Kubernetes managed by Microsoft themselves. So some part of this agent was spawned on the same network as us and was slowed down. But also there were Azure incidents, which were mostly on network. It's always DNS, right? That's what we say. I don't know what was the detailed incident, uh, but yes, Azure was having a lot of issues. I'm amazed because they did not publish anything on their status site or their blog site, but the Azure uh, console was mentioning the incident. So there was something really weird. Now we have contained the net without fixing it yet, the SNAT exhaustion problem. And these problems are gone. So we saw normal build time on Windows agent again. That's why the issue is closed. However, please note the network problem on our side are not fixed yet. Mark, can you confirm that you haven't seen let's say extensive uh, build time on these kind of agents in the past days? I have not, yeah. I've not been actively looking for it, but I've seen no issues. Cool. Next issue is partially infrastructure, partially uh, uh, Jenkins project itself. So there has been, again, uh, once every six months, a rebuild of existing tags on official images, which is uh, really more than annoying. And in that case, it wasn't. It was only on the weekly. The LTS release was partially impacted, so people with good practices did not had any impact. People using latest tags such as LTS dash IDK or something were impacted, but somehow I hope it's a valid lesson to say, hey, latest can change at any moment. In that case, um, yeah, I'm partially joking because. In that case, that was a regression to an older version, which is not a good thing. The reason is we don't know, and no one was able to, to understand why is Trusted CI is sometimes deciding to rebuild an existing tag march marked as already built. That makes no sense. There is no log, nowhere, no message that's mystery. So I've, I've proposed the radical uh, method is to remove these old tags. I was uh, I was thinking you would say uh, burn trusted, but <laughs> we could. But then you have to run and hide because trust me, people like Daniel really, really are good at finding you in this case. <laughs> all, all the bags to get rid of this issue at all. Um, yeah, that's all the problem should be solved because yeah, there is no reason to rebuild the other tags. Um, Hervé, can you just give us a summary about the splitting that you were able to achieve between weekly.ci and infra.ci? So last week I, uh, um, building both variant, uh, from the same repository was achieved, but uh, there was, uh, I've since um, added a different life cycle between them. So when only a plugin list from one or either variant is updated, only this variant is built. Uh, but then uh, when we are consuming this image on Kubernetes management, I had to adapt the update manifest to retrieve either infra CI variant or weekly CI variant, depending on the tag suffix, if it were, I was available. As a next step, I want to add a, a step to build Docker image to, so it reports, it happens to the release note, to the GitHub release note, a list of tag. So we could check uh, directly if only one target had, has been built the available image and tag. I'd like to expand that to 
other Docker uh, repo later, but we'll see later. Okay. So, uh, that... so the issue is closed, and yeah, the, this both variant has their own lifecycle now. Cool. So... to be consumed. Okay, so does that mean that uh, Stefan can proceed with the plugin update on both uh, today? So that will test the whole process for tomorrow and we will have to uh, quickly deliver the weekly bits. Is that okay for everyone? Yeah. Um, cool. To add, yeah, to add uh, quickly, uh, I've tested today uh, building only the weekly CI variant and the update key uh, creates only one the weekly CI for request. So all good. Nice job. Um, okay, so Stefan, the... The road is yours then. Cool. Uh, we had two issues. Uh, close does not pan because the requester never answered. In that case, thanks, Mark, for taking care of giving them pointers, but they never answered. So. Um, now, work in progress. Um, in terms of priority, just a, a point, I didn't have time uh, due to my uh, days off, day on, days off, uh, had time to summarize the, the budget consumption. Uh, we are doing good, but not good enough. That's the summary, uh, particularly in Azure. Uh, given how the CDF pays the bill, the constraint, the subscription and everything, our top priority for the two immediate week will be to decrease the Azure billing on the normal subscription paid by CDF. So for that, uh, that means we have to achieve, we have to work on two areas, and I'm I want to start. Uh, this video system is driving me crazy. I don't know how to disable that. So we have two main problem, uh, two main tasks. Uh, the first one should be quick. We haven't worked on this. Uh, let me get. Uh, I'm okay. The first one is around get Jenkins IO. So I've opened an issue uh, underlying that uh, while searching and watching the Azure billing, it looks like that we spend 1.8 up to 2K per month only on the storage, uh, the shared storage used by get Jenkins IO for mirror downloads of the plugins. Thing is that should be a uh, cheap storage because it has been initially used instead of disk in order to not on, only allow sharing it to have to mount it concurrently on different pods and machines, but also because it should be cheaper than a SSD for storage. Truth is it's cheaper for the storage part itself, but we are built by operations and transactions. And the pattern we have with the update center running every three minutes, meaning it's right every three minutes, uh, we are, means that we are paying a lot for these operations that also create other uh, subsequent problems. Uh, I've made two proposals based on Azure documentation. Um, the first one is to go back to SSDs, which involve a lot of engineering, but holding, uh, it means better performances uh, the other proposal is to switch to premium storage accounts, uh, which means creating a new storage account, migrating the data, migrating the application and the, the update flow. In both cases, we should be able to decrease from 1.8 to around 300k. That's really impressive based on the projection, unless we miss something, of course, but theoretically, should be able to, yeah, to drastically release our uh, our bill on that case. Um, the initial proposal we discussed, Stefan, Hervé and I have also pinged others such as Mark, Tim and others. It looks like that the migration to premium storage will be the next step because that's the one that requires less operation, most, uh, most of the safety. That should be a good middle ground. The idea is that the premium storage is a different implementation implement, uh, system. So Microsoft cannot convert the existing storage to one. So we need to create an empty one and copy the 500 gigabytes. However, that premium storage is not built per transaction. So that's why it's premium, but 
it costs way more for per gigabyte. The order of magnitude is that that's the same cost as one SSD premium disk. But it keeps the, pro the property of being able to be accessed and mounted on different mm -hmm. machines, the, which is why that's closest to the current paradigm we have today. So I would prefer to stick to that model today. Is there any question on that topic? So that one should be one of our top priority. Um, Stefan, do you think you should be able to get started on creating uh, the premium storage in Terraform? Because that's the second trick is that that storage account we have here never was never managed through Terraform. It was manually managed. So we will need to start from scratch and copy the data. That will be an opportunity to clean up, but that could hide some surprises. So the first step here will be create the empty storage, and then we will find a machine that will take care of copying the data. And once it's done, we can start preparing the migration. So Stefan, are you okay to start the work of uh, creating the empty premium storage? I will try. First, first the update of the plugins weekly, mm -hmm. and, and then I will try to to uh, start Sorry. that. That mean an empty um, Terraform file for getting get uh, Jenkins IO. Exactly, and then you can uh, start from the Hervé's work on updates Jenkins IO .tf yeah. file, except that you have to set up the new storage uh, to be a premium. Yeah. And, and and not the VM, but just the storage, okay? Related questions, does the LDAP file share uh, could uh, benefit from a premium storage too? Low, low mm. quantity, but many operations, okay. I imagine. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's not a disk. Because uh, I had, but we had another question. issue yeah. in the Azure repo that I linked to mine because we were trying to recreate sell that file share as code. Okay, uh, worth checking. Uh, that means uh, that's a good point to see how much do we spend on that uh, on that shared volume on LDAP as well. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I think if it's not a disk, it should be a disk. I don't see a reason of using, uh, maybe it's the backup. I don't remember, but yeah, worth sharing. Have LDAP could benefit from the same upgrade. Is there any other question on that topic? Okay. Uh, next topic is migrating CI Jenkins IO to the new subscription. That's the second way to ensure we decrease the bill. Uh, so uh, we we have created an, a new MTVM, the new subscription. Now the next step described on the issue are uh, let's set up the machine with Puppet start copying the data of the current CI Jenkins IO uh, secondary drive. And once the data has been copied once, test if it can start properly a controller, and then we plan the migration. Then copy data one time. Once the security release is done, we can start the real migration and run rsync on the if for data. We already did that uh, when we changed the virtual machine that took two, one or two days. And now we have everything set up. So the only issue that could appear will be permission for spawning agent or accessing agent. So that will be easy to test during the migration. Uh, the expected gain is around $500 monthly. So that's, that's still something visible. Okay, looks like dollar is having a special meaning in Markdown. Any question on the CI Jenkins IU migration? 
So I'm taking care of this one. Um, I'm going to try to associate either Hervé or Stefan, depending on when we are on the content. Right now, I was working a bit on submarine mode. So now it's time for uh, challenging with the rest of the team. Is that okay for, for everyone? Uh, but so this this one, this one, the transition we we hope to do after the security release this week even, or no, you're, it'll be yes. next week. This no, week, no, this it's week, really yeah. hope for this week. Okay, great. Thank you. And and with that change, Demian, are we? Mm -hmm. Does it look like we're within range, we're within within budget for Cost Explorer, or do we have to also do the for January, or do I need to forewarn um, CDF that will be a little high on January? Uh, we will be a little. I I don't know how we can do. Okay, I, I, I don't have other solutions. No problem. I am happy to alert them that we're 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 taking steps and. Will be a little high. That's great. Thank you. Any other question on that topic? Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, the SNAT port exhaustion. So we follow the first intermediate st uh, uh, steps. So SNAT port are, are the mechanism used when you have a request going outbound. For instance, you are on an agent or somewhere in, inside our uh, system, and you have a request that goes to the internet or outside the Azure cluster. Uh, in order to correctly answer back to the request, the remote uh, interlocutor must have a couple of IP and ports. Since you have just a few public IP, usually one, that means you need for each outbound request to allocate a port so that the answer will go back through that port. Otherwise, if you have two concurrent systems that reach at the same time the same address, such as google.com, then how does google.com know which, which one of the two processes send the request? That's why you need distinct port on the public IP. And the problem here we had is that we were uh, reaching a threshold of maximum port that could be allocated, meaning your request wasn't allowed, was piled and queued waiting for a port to be available in order to reach the internet. We already decreased the TCP timeout uh, of these requests because you had to wait until a connection was confirmed closed for 30 minutes by default. Now it's only four minutes. That also that's the setting that made the agent way more efficient for Windows container agent. Then we tried adding more ports statically because by default, Azure tries to adapt the amount of ports by doing a division with the amount of hosts needing to reach the outside. Uh, more ports instead of dynamically. Problem did not add any effect. Because as soon as we were having a deployment and our a scaling and then scale uh, down of our uh, systems, that was adding one more host moving and killing all of our roles. And as soon as we want to play on the node pools on the cluster, we are dead. We had a new machine, we are dead. And made operation wars. So that's why we went temporarily to uh, uh, mitigate, at least for a few days, we added more public IP. I mean, that's a solution that helps. However, we still have statically defined uh, split. So some public IP are full and some are empty. Going ah. back to dynamically could help, but still it's a problem because we have to pay for this public IP. This paid resources. This is a paid and rare resource. So we are working right now using a NAT gateway. Thanks from a lot of work on Microsoft and people outside on their MVP. We were able to find someone describing that even though if you tell the cluster to switch from outbound load balancer like it is today with the public IP, 
to a custom NAT manage, then the cluster will be destroyed and recreated, which we don't want. However, if you set associate the NAT gateway to the subnet used by the cluster, the cluster is not aware that it, uh, it needs to use a NAT gateway, but the NAT gateway takes precedence at the router level. And the good thing is this, in this is that if the NAT gateway infrastructure at Microsoft suffer from any outage, then the cluster use again the load balancer during the outage. So we have a highly available outbound system uh, on in theory, and we are testing this in addition and precedence. Uh, status, private gates is now using NAT gateway. Um, so we tried only private cluster just to be sure we don't break everything. Good thing, mm. because as, as Stefan can testify, we broke Did infra CI break? for 15, 20 minutes because everything worked as expected. But since we have um, uh, API protection on Kubernetes, which restrict the IP that can access the control plane to spin up uh, pods or get logs or do whatever with Kubernetes, Using the NAT gateway effectively changed the outbound IP of our resources, meaning InfraCI wasn't able to manage Kubernetes anymore. Neither our request from the pods, neither the cluster itself. So no more autoscaler, yeah, no yeah. check, nothing. We killed ourselves, by the way. Yeah. So lesson learned. Uh, we retry from scratch. We disassociated the NAT gateway, validated through the metrics in Azure that we were back to previous state added allow the NAT gateway, and then we tested uh, at enabling it again, and it worked flawlessly. So now to do public gates. I'm, could you, could you, I'm sorry for my education, one more no time. So the, the magical difference between it working and not working was? Allowing the public IP NAT gateway, which is the apparent IP of request made to Kubernetes API, uh -huh. we need to add this IP or this collection of IPs in the control plane of AKS. Oh, okay. So you had to teach the AKS control plane that requests from the NAT gateway are valid requests to the control plane. Exactly. I see. Okay. Thank you. So now we have public gates and Azure uh, Terraform is currently being disabled. Please don't enable it. At the end of the meeting, we will finish fixing this uh, element. Is there any question on that topic? So, so no risk from this to the security release tomorrow? No. We're okay. This is, this is not, has no, no expected impact. No expected impact. Great. Okay. Uh, in that case, it's because the uh, release CI is able to reach internet now and release CI is uh, allowed already. And trust it doesn't use the, this NAT gateway, uh, these two particular NAT gateway at all. Great, thank you. Uh, next one, agents are unspawning on infra CI. Stefan, can you give us a, a status summary of this one? Yes, I had to open an, an issue on uh, Azure because in fact, when I saw this, I uh, understood that the node pool, the IRM node pool was at zero. Uh, so no, no non pods were able to be spawned. And as soon as I manually uh, spawned one node, the auto scale triggered and then spawned multiple nodes until 10 and was able to, to process all the, the pod creations. Uh, that means that when you're at zero, it's not able to spawn the first one, but then it's working fine. So that, that, that for me, that means that the configuration is good, but there's a problem with the zero. Um, that's, that's what uh, happened to be told by the people from uh, Azure um, as the first answer that I got was um, uh, we, we, we and the, the best way to to work is to uh, start from one it's recommended to start the scaling at one to ensure proper functioning of the auto scaling mechanism 
of course, that's not something that we will want because that means paying for at least one node all the time. Um, if we really use at least one node, that would be okay, but I'm not quite sure. So I'm I'm still asking questions to the Azure tickets. And Tim Hunter an hour ago um, that they had the same kind of problem with spot instances uh, when they start the auto scaling at zero. So maybe we need to to dig something around that. Because we I don't mm -hmm. think we use spot instances for not in I am. I don't remember that, but I'm not quite sure. Not sure. Worth checking. Yeah. Uh Solution could be migrate, uh, creating a new cluster only for that on the new subscription because uh, Spot is not working there. And at least yep. we won't. And we're sure that it's not Spot, yes. Migrate to new subscription. So for now, I'm waiting for an answer from Azure. Okay. Is there any other comment on this one? Oh, okay. Next, so uh, that means it's fixed, and now we are waiting on uh, the reason. But that need that mean we might need to find a solution to not that's, spend too much billing. That's not fixed because I did uh, a change to one in the UI, not as code. So as soon as Terraform has come around. It, it it get back to zero, so maybe that's back now. Um, yeah. Maybe I need to put one as code to make mm. sure that we cannot that given the billing constraint. Yes, that's what. Uh, which means we have to monitor it, but that means we might see slowness on infra CI, and in that case, uh, we have to temporarily uh, scale up the the nodes. So please, people, tell us open the issues. Uh, okay, thanks for the reminder, Stefan, because that one is annoying. Uh, okay. One solution or the alternative solution here, I'm thinking aloud, uh, could be migrating. My, uh, I talked about migrating infra CI to ARM64, but uh, it's not a good solution because we decided to separate the node pool where we run controller and agents. It's not the same set of virtual machines, so the problem still stands. So if we don't have an easy solution, Stefan, that means we we have to create a new cluster only for infra CI uh, in uh, in the new subscription. But the solution would be to move everything to the new subscription, agent and and infra. Um, yes and no, if we can separate a sensitive controller from the agents, because Kubernetes is the worst for security and network isolation. But you, we can we can create two node pools in the new subscription, one for the the infra CI and the other one for the agents, yes. like we want we want to do it here. Yes, but in any case, you have to start by creating a, a cluster. So if you create a cluster yeah. with a node pool that can scale to zero, then move the agent workloads, then we can see, okay, what yeah. is the next problem? The right process, yes. From step. the billing point of view, we pay for infra CI machine today, and we will in the next month. However, the um, for the agents, if we can move them, we won't have to pay for the one minimum node and we can solve the problem that way. Yes, great. Okay, so that one is the next priority because it can have an impact on bidding. There's a lot of priority. Yeah. Yes, but uh, if we don't have money to pay uh, the bidding next, I mean, so yeah, we need to act and uh, swiftly. Unexpected delays. So yeah, uh, I propose we will do a temporary uh, checkup end of week, uh, Stefan and Hervé. I might need your help to focus only on this one if needed. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> While well, I'm gone. Next one. Unexpected delays building small plugin on Linux agent. I believe Hervé, you started to work and diagnose this one. Yeah, so I confirm that there is an issue with DigitalOcean uh, um, ACP provider. I reproduce the longer time. 
and uh, short time with uh, ACP disabled. Uh, there is no issue with the Azure and AWS provider. And uh, you propose, Damien, that we start the Kubernetes 1.27 uh, upgrade on DigitalOcean, so mm -hmm. it will recycle every node. Uh, we can also disable this provider in CI Jenkins.io configuration. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. so uh, a part of the plugin build will not use the ACP, but will query directly GFOL. I don't know. It, mm -hmm. It's a possibility. Yes. What do you think, Mark? Because I remember you added a message about uh, you want the bandwidth to look good uh, for GFrog on January this month. Yeah, I was. I'm so. I think I'm okay with us just living with DigitalOcean ACP being slow, but it, it is interesting that it would only be on DigitalOcean that we would have the that we would disable ACP, mm -hmm. right? Because we're not seeing the same behavior on Azure and AWS. Yeah, I haven't. Big, uh, a lot on this issue, more work on right. and and for me, uh, while while I I find it distracting, distracting right now is is for me not our top priority, right? We've got to worry more about Azure Azure cost management, and we've got to worry more about other things. So if this one just needs to wait, I think that's okay. I mean, we, we certainly have a workaround, right? The workaround, and Hervé, you noted the workaround. It is, I can disable ACP in any Jenkins job by a single argument to the Jenkins file, right? I mean, I I can I can disable the ACP at any time if it gets in my way. The, the reason I believe is because uh, the way Kubernetes manage cluster and digital lesson are, are uh are handled, approaching one month bef before depreciation, I mean, on the storage system, uh, I have a gut feeling it's related to the storage system. We already had this twice in the past uh, 18 months. And when we are close to the depreciation of the Kubernetes version we are running, it looks like their storage system is deprecating some APIs silently, step by step, leading mm -hmm. to something working, but slower. That's mm. why also the cube 1.27 could help determining if I'm correct or not, because we have to do it before end of February for DigitalOcean in any case. And the CSI <clears throat> persistent volume driver are, are there. Uh, there could be a, a solution now that will consist in uh, uh, tainting and draining the existing node to force the autoscaler creating two new machines, even on the current version that would have the same effect. But if uh, they have deprecated some CSI storage API on their storage system that won't have any effect. So that's why cube 1.27 will be a one operation and then we'll see a different behavior or not. Alternatively, something that Hervé proposed uh, when we started the ACP project, it will be to get rid of the, <clears throat> uh, the cluster, the Kubernetes cluster we use for digital ocean. In that case, ACP is uh, part is uh, specific enough in the way how it works and use system resources to not uh, run on Kubernetes. It's not made for this. Uh, so maybe switching to one or two virtual machine could be an alternative solution. That's something we already explored in terms of billing because uh, we saw that we cannot scale to zero on Kubernetes for DO. And we mentioned and uh, drafted something around using uh, agent with virtual machine instead of container or Jenkins controller. That will be the same idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kubernetes is something, but it's not the golden bullet. And here, between the performances issue we saw when we reached certain threshold of parallel requests, uh, the way we, we manage ACP, this kind of regular problem, we could also call it a draft and say Kubernetes is not made for running that kind of workload. Something to to think in the upcoming months. So those are those sound like all potential long longer term solutions. Yes. Uh, I, that that feels reasonable to me. Uh, in terms of guidance for for short term, if 
if we disable um, the artifact caching proxy on DigitalOcean, uh, what any in any guess on what fraction of our total jobs go to the DigitalOcean Kubernetes cluster? I can look into data log to to see the proportion of bandwidth consumed by every provider. Okay, yeah, it's and and it's it's. I'm not sure it's worth the investigation. I just know that that simple plugin that I that tiny plugin I was working with did choose DigitalOcean, and I assume that that's because it was configured to use container agents like we prefer. I didn't check the previous issue, but uh, I think uh, DigitalOcean provider was also concerned in the in previous uh, command from Basil. Ah, okay. And on one or two issue, he commented about ACP, uh, seemingly related, and yeah. I I will vote for initial uh, RV proposal. Let's disable for the upcoming two weeks digital ocean agents. It's an easy and quick thing. It's a one line change, uh, one enable true to set to false. Once deployed to CI Jenkins IO, CI Jenkins IO will only spin up containers inside AWS instead of DO and AWS. Uh, that will increase a bit the AWS build for the time being, but that will ensure we have good performances and that could allow us to focus on other tasks. Because as Mark said, even searching that the uh, data dog is uh, wasting time instead of right. focusing on the Azure build. Right. And, and I, th I think if... it's it's useful. If... It's not wasting, wasting is not a good word. It's useful, but it's not the right moment to do this. Clearly. Right. And and that's that I think is the more crucial, the more crucial thing is we've we have a, a short-term need to be sure that we control Azure expenses and spending a little extra on AWS right now by not spending on DigitalOcean for the next few weeks is a good is a good compromise. Right. That feels yeah. like a very good compromise. My workaround is just saying the pipeline array to to use Zufrog uh, instead of the ICP. It doesn't disable the use of a digital yes. agent. But, right, but the problem the... then is that will cause increased bandwidth yeah. at at JFrog, and I worry that I don't want them to come back in February and say, "Oh, your bandwidth was high in January." Exactly. It, it, it just I don't want that disruption in February if we can avoid it. Yeah, sure, okay. But so it's it it will be yeah disabling DO agents then. Great. All together. Yes. Okay, sorry, I didn't, I wasn't sure we were on the same page. No, no, no problem. You did you did good to ask. May yeah, I ask thanks. you to send that pull request RV uh, and update because that's an, a quick and easy one. And then we can move that subject on the backlog for after the first demo. Let's roll for this. Is there any other question, folks, on that topic? Oh, okay. Uh, then, uh, Stefan, your turn. Uh, we add infra CI migration to RM64 for the Azure billing, but slowly. That's a long-term uh, task. What's the status for this one? Um, yes, I did move the two uh, um, image, uh, pod template image, and in, in, it's not pod template, but that um, container Docker images. image, container images um, that were not RM64 compatible. Um, I changed them to use the um, agent label instead and, and using the all-in-one, uh, which is compatible with ARM64. So two and three are now using it. It's uh, all the Terraform project that we're using on Infra CI and uh, the update CLI, which is used a lot. And now they, have, uh, they are using the, the all-in-one in, in ARM64. And uh, now I started working on the builder image, which is um, uh, used to build uh, uh, Jenkins.io and uh, uh, reports, I think, if I remember correctly. So this one is also used in CI Jenkins.io, 
So first step, I migrate um, the, the usage on Infra CI to the all-in-one and then to the all-in-one in ARM64. Maybe I will do directly in ARM64. And then I will have to work on CI to uh, provide the new agent and, and change on CI the pipeline using the builder image. And then what? I'm so infra reports. I speak way too fast. No problem. I was buffering. <laughs> You're good to, to take notes, really. Um, so that's nice job. Uh, the hidden uh, gain for the team is that with these two images, first images already archived, that's way less pull requests to review updates to deploy. And that was also um, the way for us we migrated to Terraform. Oh, yeah. 1.6. is now used instead of 1.1. One. The CLI, the CLI uh, Terraform. Uh, so that was a good opportunity for us to do that migration that was uh, clearly needed. Uh, less PR to review. Uh, that's all on that topic, Stefan. Is that uh, correct? Yes, I think. Except uh, if you have any question. So be careful to properly uh, synchronize with the documentation team and con usual contributor of the website uh, when you will work on the Docker builder. That's low priority, so that there should be no action on the upcoming days. But uh, mention to uh, Mark, yes. Bruno, Alex, uh, Kevin. Uh, yes, the, the usual suspects uh, <laughs> that uh, the, the the pull request on Jenkins IO on website might have issues on uh, during the uh, preview sites generation, or if you see slowness, except tomorrow, of course, because that will be security releases, but slowness on deploying new version of Jenkins IO on production, that could be an... Um, unwanted the side effect of this task. Yeah, because if we if if we use the ARM one, that could also be also be the problem with the node pool not triggering the Oh yeah, good point. That too. So yes, that can happen because we switch to ARM. ARM. Uh then Hervé, two topics that uh, your work is uh, on. Blob X fair command line replaced by AZ copy and update Jenkins IO to another cloud. Can you give us a just see are we going offline? We might not need to delay. No, no. Okay. Could you give us a summary um, status? Yes. So uh, I'm currently uh, I'm adding a stored access policy to the file share that we can pass as parameter to the AZ uh, CLI command to generate a SS token. Uh, doing so allow us to have a sure way of revoking a SS token by uh, expiring uh, the related uh, storage access policy. Um, I have a pull request open for that. Uh, then I will. I have to add a service principal application in uh, in private KHS uh, Terraform configuration to be able to then create an Azure service principal credential in in Afra that CI Jenkins .io to to generate uh, to use a service principal to manipulate the contributors that Jenkins that IO file share from Afra CI uh, by logging uh, with AZ and the service principal uh, credential, then uh, using the AZ uh, uh, authentication with AZ copy to manipulate the, uh, the file share. I'm using contributors to Jenkins that IO as uh, first target as it has uh, Less um, less important than the other uh, services like uh, plugins, Java Doc, or, or else. 
Um, when I put this ready, I will be able to apply that to other file share and also more importantly, I think, to the update of Jenkins at IO file share. Uh, that stored access policy plus the short lived SS token, which we can um, set to be uh, uh, to expire uh, in one hour or less, depending on the job, uh, we should be okay security wise. Since we also confirm that we can't revoke uh, existing uh, SS token if they don't have a mass. Uh, a stored access policy. Thanks. So as a reminder, that one will also have impact on the plugin update from the update center that run regularly on the PKG machine that writes to one of these storage accounts. Same for the core releases. So that's why starting with uh, smaller services will ensure that we uh, we take the experience on the, and see how it behaves before going to more critical workloads. Thanks, Hervé. So for update Jenkins IO, does that mean that it, the new proof of concept that is not used in production should be one of the next in line to test this mechanism as well? Yes. Candidate or the above as a copy short. And of course, the the one that Stefan is going to uh, uh, to create might also be uh, a candidate, but that's decorrelated for now. It's just that Stefan, can you please take care of adding the policy at a moment in time? Maybe not on the first time, but not sure to be to be to be talked and but uh, creating the policy uh, should be good. So I let you sync with Hervé when you create the the module to see if the policy is working or not, or if you delay the creation of the policy for later as one of the last step of the blob extra migration. Yes, I will see that in my open pull request on Azure, if uh, I can add a policy to an existing file share without mm -hmm. any perturbation. Don't forget to prepare, uh, you have some poupettes. Install a Z copy uh, on PKG. Yes, I, uh, not for contributor and Java doc, yeah, but it, it will be yes. later. But that's that's a requirement for uh, updates for Git and and for core releases. Any other question on these two topics? So as a reminder, migration of the update center is delayed to February, time for the security team to be okay and for us to have decreased the Azure bidding. Uh, we have an outgoing issue, incorrect email while it registered. The, I don't remember the status of this one. Okay, they never answered, so I propose that we close it as as a uh, not plan because we did never had an answer. Mm, okay, now we'll update the note then. Um, then what do we have? Uh, uplink, we had issues on the uplink system, not blocking. Uh, that's a tiny step by tiny step issue. Uh, some element on the database for uplink are corrupted. Uh, I was able to find one and deleted it. So now the download goes further, but it looks like there is at least one another record which is corrupted. So uh, each time it's uh, using dichotomy. So yes, uh, work in progress. One uh, corrupted record deleted from the table. Searching for another. I'm trying to uh, to give a state of uh, where we are for each, for each steps. I tried automation uh, on uh, a copy uh, with the way less data. Um, the 12 script I tried are all flowed. 
and are not able to handle the amount of data we have there and the rich timeouts or worse are generating uh, uh, invalid SQL requests. Uh, most of the time it's because uh, oh we have configured the database for that application. But I tried, I listened to Hervé and clearly it would have helped, but I'm sorry, I wasn't able to make it work. Corrupted record. Uh, so to reiterate, that... this one is not causing serious production problems. It's more Absolutely of a, not. great, okay, yep. thanks. So that's why it's a tiny step by tiny, tiny step. So no need to spend too much time on this. It's just the dichotomy that, uh, that run. Uh, it takes six hours for the first steps. And at the end, it's 10 minutes. So it's by tiny steps. Mm. Um, I've opened an issue because thanks to Basil, uh, we had some um, cleanup on the way we spin up agents to remove the deprecated GNLP arguments. So you already did most of the work. It's a matter of us of updating. Uh, so we gave details on a uh, sub-issue and they showed to us the changes we would want. Uh, the goal is to update puppet configuration to be sure that our controllers are spinning up agent with the new forms to avoid warning and deprecating message and avoid breaking the agent spinning up when uh, a certain version of the remoting jar will be deployed without supporting these old deprecated arguments. No emergency. I propose that we wait uh, at least one or two milestones on this one because uh, yes, that one looks easy, but in fact, once it will be deployed, that means we have to check for each controller, uh, each of the free controller, if they can spin up properly all kinds of agents. And we have to test all kinds exhaustively, otherwise we don't uh, push that change. So I propose to, to, to delay for later this one. Or later. Uh, same for the question for Alex about revoking open VPN uh, certificates. I'm not sure about the process here. Uh, I will take the opportunity to discuss it with Olivier Vernon since he wrote the wall open VPN stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, not going to spend some time here. Uh, the request from Alex is legit. That would be good for us to revoke existing certificates. Uh, I'm not sure uh, I, uh, that needs some investigation. That's technically possible, but I don't know if it's easy to do. So I propose to delay uh, for later. Unless someone has a objection. One, two, three, no, okay. Hervé, can you give us a summary on Docs Jenkins IO? No progress since last week. Uh, I prioritized other issue. Mm -hmm. I still have to start by uh, writing uh, run books on controllers and docs that uh, doc docs in .io. And given, uh, should we consider dropping this one from the current? Just admitting that right now, Vandit Singh is Vandit is unavailable doing uh, university exams. And waiting another week or two to do this, I think, is a is a safe compromise, right? Is is Vandi Vandi won't work on it in exams, and Chris Stern, I think, is fine if we delay as well. Kevin is actually able to do testing without this, so his validation is not blocked by this, as far as I know. So I don't see any any compelling reason for us to say we must do this it's it's great that everybody started it but i think we could safely say let's delay it fine for me Hervé, what Hervé, is think? that okay for you as well fine fine too okay because in terms of impact on the project that one's actually um lower impact than the next one on the list and i'm not even sure we should spend time on the next one between now and fosdom <laughs> Okay, I can already write delay for later, right? Yes. <laughs> Just because I 
I think the the investigation is if we find a solution for it, great. But the Azure cost controls are more important than this. Absolutely. We have two items. First one, migration leftover from public uh, so to RM64. So we still have uh, systems such as uh, ACP uh, on public cluster still on uh, AMD. Just for the person removing the uh, markdown states, it's four spaces for a sublist. That's markdown. The rest are uh, non-markdown compliant elements. I was just putting the same intent that you put the line above. But... <laughs> yeah, it, it comes from the template in AKMD. I need to yeah. fix it. But just the issue but don't above, spend you have a problem. Um, so I, we were able to work on uh, LDAP. Uh, LDAP. So uh, we had uh, we had to update the LDAP system uh, because it wasn't updated since at least 12 months in production. Uh, so image update was an old one. Um, thanks to the work that both Stefan and Hervé did on the library pipeline library we use for building images. Uh, thanks to Docker Bake support because it has two different images. Good thing is that these two images must be uh, as the same lifecycle. They must be released and deployed at the same time with the same version. So no, not the same problem as what Hervé faced with Weekly and InfraCI, which has different lifecycle. But we still had we were still requiring the support of having those two images. So the first step was a migration. Now. We are blocked on migrating LDAP to RM64 because uh, RM64 require running in a different availability zone. And the problem is that current storage, which is a partial answer to the question raised by uh, Hervé earlier today, the let's say the live storage used by LDAP is a disk. Otherwise, uh, there wouldn't be any availability zone problem. Is in different zone than IRM64 nodes. So that means we will need to do the same uh, operation that what uh, Stefan did for weekly CI. We'll need to create a snapshot, a geo-replicated snapshot, or a zone, zone replicated snapshot, ZRS, of the current data and migrate LDAP, or use the LDAP backup mechanism. And I believe that's the one in a storage account. Uh, LDAP, each time it's stopped, there is a backup which is done on a mount point, which is most probably a store, um, file share and not a disk. So maybe we don't need the migration of the live data. And instead, we can only scale, stop LDAP properly, migrate it to IRM64, and reset the, the disk and that should be fine. So I propose that we delay for after first them. And last item on the list, uh, Stefan and Hervé, it's the exporting the download mirror list to a textual representation, meaning having a kind of uh, a public light API for providing data of the infrastructure publicly. Uh, cat, so what's no, no progress except that we have now uh, a clear goal uh, for this issue uh, representation of only this mirror list uh, uh, to be um, so simple as possible for now, keeping in mind that it will be expanded with other information later. I believe uh, let's remove from the upcoming milestone. That's bonus. Um, I would keep it as now. Have a, I mean, I know what, uh, what's in there. So mm -hmm. yes, know, yeah. but if you are able so to spend some time on this. A low priority, I know. I know. Low no, priority. no, 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 it's not. I propose we delay because if you are able to spend some time on this, it's better you spend some time on the other Azure related elements. That's right. what I'm seeing. And I, I tend to agree with, with Damian that this one, it's okay if we just let it sit, even as interesting and fun as it is. I mean, 
the, there is already the blob X for Azicopy, which is uh, important and almost necessary. There is a supporting Stefan on creating the new uh, Get Jenkins IO you storage, etc. Okay. That th these are the we have to decrease the amount of tests. That's mandatory. Uh, do we have other issue that has been added and not on triage? No, we don't have any new issue. So it's time for you folks, if you want to discuss topics that could be prior or you want to mention them, even if it means delaying them after first day. <laughs> However, yeah. uh, worth mentioning them. Yes, uh, we mentioned a bit earlier that we could uh, create multiple GitHub applications to avoid uh, be rate limited, one for each main job on Infra CI, for example, one for Kubernetes, one for the reports, and so on. So, yeah. Apps. Yeah, this will slow us down. Web application installation has its own rate limit. So one GitHub application installed on two different organizations correspond to two rate uh, quotas. And uh, one GitHub app installed in uh, uh, two, two GitHub applications installed in the same organization correspond to two quotas also. Yeah, that one because we are blocked so at least once a week now on infra ci uh, each time there is a configuration reload or uh, something like this um all jobs are blocks until we reach the new threshold uh that one is quick i'm not sure if we should spend time on this immediately uh, but that means accepting that we could be blocked during important production operation it's not a danger for tomorrow sure but tomorrow, after the weekly is released and we deploy the new image, we might reach, while deploying the new core version on Infra CI, we might reach the API rate limit again, like every time we deploy a new weekly version. So that mm -hmm. means we should not plan any critical operation until Infra CI is back uh, to normal tomorrow. So that means the update can take 10 minutes when everything goes very well to one hour. Uh, it's not a danger for CI Jenkins IO migration because if we hit the rate limit, we can always run, uh, I will be able, or Stefan will be able, or Hervé will be able to run Azure or Terraform locally and then push the code. So it's not a danger for Tuesday and Friday. I don't know for next week, folks, so I will let you the, the decider of this before uh, uh, while I'm gone. Uh, if we'll you think it's blocking, see. that's worth uh, writing this in an issue. We'll see if we if we are locked or not. If we're locked a lot, we are locked a lot. Also about rate limiting, I don't remember mm -hmm. if we uh, spoke about uh, the issue, the temporary issue we had with Docker, with mm -hmm. our Docker account. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> Uh, the last three in Bund agent release were uh, incomplete due to 429 errors, too many requests from Docker Hubs, and it was due to a misconfiguration on their side. They put us out of their rate, uh, accepted uh, uh, consumer, uh, exclude from rate limiting. And also, our Jenkins Infra organization was temporarily put out of the Docker open source open source sponsorship program because they added a uh, while uh, due to the addition in our account to a, to a new free feature for us Docker Scout. They revert the the change and everything is all right now. So yes, thanks again uh, for Docker for the sponsorship. It's uh, yeah. Yeah, I I I'm 
I took the happy path on that one. Docker has confirmed we are still an open source subscription to them. And that's a, that's a very happy path for us. We need Docker Hub to keep sponsoring us. And the, the, the new feature, so yeah. Right. And that new feature looks actually like it might be interesting to us. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I went out to King cooking with them. Yet another security scanning. <laughs> no, 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 not that. Not that. I want to uh, mm. avoid the uh, republication uh, of image if n not uh, no update mm. whatsoever are in. Because Docker right. Scripts allows to analyze finally every uh, program and binaries installed in the image. Oh, so right. we can see, useful. for example, uh, a POSIX. Uh, tools has been updated or not because we are regularly, periodically building our image to get the last run from, for example, apt get mm -hmm. where we don't uh, fix our version. So having something saying no, there is absolutely no difference between this and the previous release, so no need to publish a new periodic release. Be nice. Good. Good feature, thanks for sharing. And tangentially related, related I will also later on, or, uh, on my own time look at uh, Tim uh, Jacob's suggestions of also publicating a uh, Docker image on GitHub uh, uh, repository in addition to Docker Hub. Mm -hmm. Let's see it's happening. Good. I think we've reached the end. Is there other topics you want to, to check, folks? Okay, so then I'm going to stop sharing screen. I'm going to stop recording. So for people watching us, see you in two weeks. Uh, no, next week. Sorry. But for me in three weeks. Then. For you. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye.